started here. Um, when I was working on the VA and the DOD uh, electronic health record systems, VISTA and uh, CHCS, I realized that we had some really incredibly complex issues to resolve. Uh, this is all based in the MUMPS language, one data type. Uh, we used a single uh, virtual machine, you'd call it today, this is 1978-82. Uh, of 19 commands, 22 functions, and one data type. Uh, from that kernel, we built an out outer layer of called the file manager, which used a thing called the data dictionary, which was a roadmap to the database. So the first file we designed was the data dictionary. The next file was a patient database. The next file was the user file. And that provided a, a, a foundation from which we composed Vista. Uh, it wasn't a process of decomposition into functional pieces and trying to put it back together again. But it was a matter of using these components uh, uh, over and over again. Uh, there's, if, you, if you Google Moneke Cunningham, you'll hear uh, Ward Cunningham, who invented the wiki, and I uh, talking about the similarity between Wikipedia and wiki and the community that sprang up around Wikipedia uh, relating to Vista and the VA and the community around that. So to me, it, it, the, the EHR is actually a whole community development process. Um, very linguistically oriented. So I said, what, all these people can't talk to each other, how do we get them to talk? So VISTA was this model of trying to uh, uh, build up from uh, a common infrastructure. And that common infrastructure, we didn't have XML, didn't have a, a RDF back then. Uh, we pulled together a data dictionary of just what made sense at the time. Uh, this is on PDP 11s with uh, 9600 baud communication. So. Um, and the data dictionaries turned out to be a really wonderful platform for doing all this. So in looking forward for the next generation, this is 30 years old now, uh, where do we go with it? And to me, it makes all the sense in the world, is to move into a semantic uh, web-oriented approach. Everything that uh, my previous speaker, Mike or Charlie, uh, said about identity and this, that's exactly what we were saying. Uh, with the file manager and the data dictionary. We had an internal entry number that uniquely identified the patient. The users never saw it. They saw names and social security numbers and links to it. It's very context rich. We did not use the structural, uh, the relational database model. I call it the pigeonhole paradigm. Uh, you can't sit there and predefine all the, the pieces. Um, I don't think I'm going to see the uh, slides I presented, but uh, we'll talk about um, the integration crunch, I call it. So if you look at, uh, you're trying to uh, integrate an organization and you have an intercom, one wire and two intercoms, you press a button, you talk to the other one. Wow, that's really cheap and, and efficient. One button, one talk. Put uh, three intercoms together, now you have three wires and two buttons, and then four wires is three buttons and six wires. And as you go, you get into the n-squared problem. You get a whole lot more wires and it gets a lot more complicated in how you uh, manage all this. So what you do here is um, you start with the complexity of something that looks very cheap and simple at the beginning, and it starts scaling up, and the organization suddenly has so many uh, wires that you, you have this escalating cost. So you get the chief intercom officer to figure out how to run all these wires and everything. So uh, it looks like it's a cheap solution, but it, it takes off very quickly. So that's the intercom or point-to-point -point dynamic. What's the next slide? So if you, if you went to us a PBX and you paid more money to start with and everybody got a four-digit extension, well, that that's, you know, makes a lot of sense after a certain point. But, uh, so the lower marginal cost, it gets cheaper to expand it, but next slide. You end up with this kind of a situation. You start out here thinking it's, it's cheap, it's going to go cheaply. As you expand, you get into this area where you, where you say, oh, I should have gotten the PBX, but the cost of the sum costs are such that I'll just keep pushing this higher and higher. So this is what I call the integration crunch, where you have so much sum costs on trying to fit the old guy that you can't see your way out of the, the problem. The associated system is this, this region out here that says, well, what if we had an open, scalable architecture and allow this to, uh, you, you could talk to China on your telephone. You don't need to press the four digits and everything else like that. So this, uh, this chart actually came off of my experience with uh, Network Solutions of the domain name system. I, I was with SAIC when we bought Network Solutions. And this 
basically was what the world was before domain names and the World Wide Web took off. And everybody was trying to put together their own systems. And you have AOL here and Prodigy here and Novell here. And everybody had all these pieces they were trying to wire together. And that was the integration crunch. Tim Berners-Lee came out with the URL, HTTP, and HTML, triggered off the World Wide Web, and you have what I call an associative avalanche. But everybody suddenly wanted to do that, and that was really the core of the dot-com era. The people who are up here are not the ones that wanted to see this happen. AOL didn't want to see the web. Network didn't want to see the web. So the stakeholders in the current systems are not going to be the ones that want to see the, this avalanche here. And I am um, betting that uh, semantic web technology will be that trigger point for that associative avalanche in healthcare. That suddenly it will be so much easier to connect and go into a high scale operation. And a whole lot of the stuff that we're doing today is going to be obsoleted by it. But I only have five minutes to talk about it.